Hello, this is another video. This one is on a bit more programming and also a couple of more train tech products that I've just had. But the main thing is, the reason I'm doing this one is today is my birthday. I'm 71. So a bit later on I should be celebrating that. So we'll start off. One of the things I've actually got sitting in my system, if I actually come up here onto the programs and sitting in here is one called clock. What that is there is if you actually press it there you can actually get all the different things you can get in there, chimes, acceleration programs also. But this one actually says chimes. Now what actually it does with this one is now it's set in the system all I have to do is to go on there, press clock and press that and the clock now is in motion. You see in about another eight minutes this will actually go. And what it does is it chimes on the quarter of an hour and chimes on the hour and also gives you the number of strikes for what hour it is. The only thing I have with this particular problem is the chimes are exactly like my door chimes and I hear this when I'm messing around up here on the, on the railway. I run downstairs and find there's nobody at the door because it's up here. So that's a little bit of a problem I have, so I don't use it all the time. But anyway, the next thing is if you go to this bar here and double click it, you get this little box here. I'll actually move it up here just out of the way so you can see it. And there's a positive there and a little box. That is the delete button. And this one, if you press that, you get that. In there, the functions, you've got loco, so you have to put a loco, put the loco in there, in here it runs down and brings you all your locos. You just type in there, same as if I've got one here for the mallard, I find the mallard, put it in there. That happens is that, that button then comes up and it actually says mallard. What it does then is when you press that button, this particular box here, will actually enlarge to the larger section which you, you normally use. So it's a, an easy way of particular trains that you run of operating them. On sounds, if you go to sound, what you've got here is if actually down here you've got all these chimes and stuff here down here. Uh, if I actually go... Where are we? Let's find one for you, an easy one. You use that one there, and I just put it, just type something in, doesn't matter. And all I do then is click that box, there it is. And all I do is then is actually, if you've got any training entrance, you can use this. The next train to arrive at platform. And then you put the one or the two or the three, and you add them all in. And that is uh, one easy way of actually getting written. The next train to arrive at platform. That's it, I'm going to take it out so it doesn't actually operate anymore. And then you can actually get 10 of these little boxes. The thing is, you can move them anywhere you want on the screen. And then there's a thing, actually, if you go into the Railmaster file, you can either, normally they'll come up and they come along horizontally, but you can actually get them go vertically, so you can actually put them down the side of the track down here. They do get in the way a bit when you've got, you know, your voice control on and such like that, but they're brilliant. And all you've got to do is double-click that, and it goes. Now this little arrow here is ideal because if you've got a your system such as come down here, get to about that there, this bit here is a bit hidden. So all you do is press that little button and it actually brings the large screen. It hides the bar at the bottom. You only need that if you're looking for some stuff. So the artifact normally you mostly have it like that. So that is a, an, another one. Now this particular bit here you can actually see is for a level crossing, which I have just installed there. But first of all, I'll actually go to one of my first products I've just had, which is the Train Tech Coach Light. This one in particular is a CL22, because what it's actually got is here, on the end there's a little plug and that goes onto two wires. They do come with them. There is a little 
neon comes, you drill two little holes, push the neon through, plug them in. You don't have to solder them, they just plug in and push into those little holes and they're done. There's five LEDs and the little watch battery at the end. And all you do is actually, do, I've actually just put some blue tack in there, just hold it upon the roof. But you can actually cut these. There are sections where you can actually cut these. In the instructions it shows you exactly where you can cut them. So if you've got a shorter coach, or you've got a, a problem where you want to move one bit, and you want another bit in another part of the coach, especially if you've got like a motor in the middle, you can actually do that and just solder wires across, and they'll just work just the same. The five LEDs, they are motion sensored, this particular thing, it's absolutely brilliant. The actually, the, the normal coach light is £20, and this one, because I've actually got the uh, light on the end, this is £25. They are motion sensored, so what happens is, if you only got to touch this, and the lights come on. And as you see, just, there we are. and there's a little neon on the back. So what I have to do, I have to show you this in motion. So I just pick it up, put it onto the coat like that. Now what I actually do, I have to put some lights on out of the way. Uh, I'll actually shift some paper out of the way. I'll actually operate my guide ball. I'll put the sound on. And what I actually do, I actually Close the curtains, so it's a bit better. There it is, all lit up. And all I have to do is move the train off. And there is the little neon back flashing. And it's as easy as that. It takes the hardest part actually is actually I to turn put the curtains back again. The hardest part actually is taking the body off. That's it, let's take that out of the way then. But that'll now stay on for four minutes, as long as the train doesn't move, and then they just go off. So they're nice, they're very good. I actually need another two now for the other two coaches to finish that section off. Now, the other thing I've actually bought is the level crossing. This is a sound level crossing. Now, one of the things you actually you need first is you actually need a barrier. These are Pico LK51s. These are what you've got to have to fit the lights. And all you do is you actually drill the three little holes out there and on the back all you do is attach is I have to just push the, the light into the hole. I have to super glued it into the hole and then you can actually see there preform the wires. Those are the negatives all coming down the stem. What I've done there, I've actually, I've actually super glued those three wires onto that stem and there is now a wire attached onto it there, as you can see. And what I've actually done with the positives, I've actually put these little sleeves on and I've actually glued them right at the bottom where the little uh, neons are. All that is is that when they bent over and come down the stem, they are protected from those negatives so they're kept clear. All do then is attached three three white cables onto there. With that, drill a hole into the unit and then all I do is, is install it like that. The little neons, which are these little things, the, the one thing you've got to do, make sure you, you put them in the correct way. These are, they are positive and a negative. And on the end, you actually can't see it, but actually, in fact, what it actually is, it's, it looks like that. And what you've got is, where the round bit is at the top, that cable at the back is actually a positive, and the bottom, the bottom where the flat bit is, and that's a negative. And 
that's all you do, you stick them in. Now one of the things that you get with the system is this is the little sound box and this is the little unit that does the whole uh, works for it. There's all your cables connections. There is where your mains comes in. You can see the mains is on so the little light comes on. This little learner button, what it actually is, there's two ways of doing this. If you press the button once, what happens is that the sound will come on and the lights will come on, but the sound will go off after seven seconds. But if you press the button twice, the sound and the lights will stay on permanently. Now then, the way you actually do it is after you press it twice, you go to either your, same as this, I've got an Elite here, you get the accessory, code it up to which one number you want, press it twice, now what I've actually done is I've pressed this one because all I want is when I want to use the red, that's the stop, that will then operate. So what you have to do is do this on the, on the screen. If I now go into the program, and go down here to my plan, which is this one, and there it sits. Now this little box here, now this is a programmable box. Now if you actually go onto this particular section here, press that. This is only in the Pro version, you can get this. This little box here, if you press that, that's what you get. Bring it down here just so I can show you. Now if you right click on it, this is what comes up. And what, in fact, in fact, if you go to the bottom here and just run it along, you put all the numbers, or you've actually got a light, clock, you've got a cross in there, you've got signals, shunting, you've got a train, you've got sound, you've got a turntable. And all you have to do is, if you've got a program already done, all you use is you use this symbol and you can actually then move this symbol wherever you want. So I just just come out of there for a minute. So this thing is, you put it anyway onto the track. So if actually I got something here for shunting, I could actually run the program, put the little marker up here and press it and it'll actually do the marking. So I have to do this and you could do this, just take it out of the system. I don't want that. Right, now what I've got with this because that's a program pack, you can't actually operate the light on the crossing like this. So what I've done is use this. I use a, a normal signal system. There's the decoder point. It's a train tech. I've left that as it is. Now, as you did with the unit, you set the button going. You then do it on the Elite or on this. All you have to do is you can either press the red or the green and that will put the signal or the... There's the clock going off. Right, that's a quarter an hour. So what you've actually got is here, I actually got mine is that if I press the red one, which is for stop, which is the barrier will be down, the sound will come on and then press the green one, it will actually go off. So all you do is I'd actually press that, that will then set the system off and it's all done. So I've actually come out of there now. I can come out of there. Don't want that. Right, so there's the barrier. And all I have to do is press the little red button. The amber light comes on. And then the two reds come on. That will now stay on until I actually turn it off. So to turn it off, all I actually have to do is go back to this. Press the green button. And it's off. And it's done finished. Now then, one little problem I've just had, uh, come up here the other night and as you can see here I've got a section of track missing. The reason for that is, is round about here, I've actually brought a train, I was bringing the train in here up to, to go up there round into the, the back fiddle yard up there and the train kept coming off and I thought what on earth is going on here and I found what had actually happened is the track had bottled. It, it actually come out of its sleepers. So I actually had to take that which is about two foot of track out and I've now got two pieces of track now to reinstall onto there and refit it. Because what actually happens is when you've actually done this which is you laid your track, you put your ballast in, you PVA'd it in 
Now what it's actually done, it's, it's glued the sleepers to the ballast and it's like concrete. Now this works just like it does on a normal railway. When the heat, this room has actually got extra uh, lagging in now, so it actually does get warm in here. So what actually happens is, this all stays solid, but the, the rails are expanding, and they've got nowhere to go. So what they actually did, they burst out of the sleeper joints. So that is just a pre-warning, just to uh, beware of this when you, if you've got it in a warm room. If you've actually laid it in the winter, or the cold weather, and then you get come summer, this could actually happen. So just beware. And that is it for this particular video. And I will actually now go off and enjoy my birthday. Thank you.